So uh, we'll, we'll play a few more uh, segments. What do we have coming up now? Okay, then how about a couple of radio, radio shows that were designed primarily for children? For example, we had one of the most famous cowboy men of all. How many of you recall Tom Mix? Tom Mix, Walton, Shakers are on the air. And from out of the West comes Tom Mix, America's favorite cowboy, and his wonder horse pony. Start the morning with hot roast and Andy Shirley will agree. That the form of fill the breakfast gives the cowboy energy. It's delicious and nutritious, made of golden western wheat. Take it in from Congo and tell your mom hot roast and take TV. The entire volcanic island seems honeycombed with tunnels and caves and linking inner corridors which seem to be the haunts of the guardians of the skulls and the priests of the jaguar. Down one of these ancient dry as dust corridors is hidden the pirate treasure according to the precious Chinese parchment map of P.Y. Link. And it was down this underground passage that the eccentric Florence Sedgwick made the young steward and the Swede cook carrier leaving behind the wheelchair. Within 10 minutes, Jack, Doc, and Jerry were on their trail and 15 minutes later had caught up with them in this great underground amphitheater. Word about tomorrow night, City Councilor Thomas Early will be here to talk about municipal affairs. I will not be, but Don Richards will uh, graciously sit in as guest host tomorrow night. I don't know when we're going to get back to the phone calls, but I thought it would be, uh, it would be best if we finish the tape first, and then if we have time for some phone calls, we can, we can go to the phone calls, okay? Okay, Ben. One of the most frightening shows on radio the one that started off as a Halloween prank on October 30th, 1938. This was the famous War of the Worlds broadcast. A broadcast that caused well over a million people to wonder whether the end of the world had come. This was the program that caused a tremendous number of the New Jersey inhabitants to panic, to flood the receivers with calls frantically to the police, to become in shock, and to flee for their lives to the hills. And on the basis of that broadcast, Orson Welles got himself into a lot of difficulty. I thought perhaps it would be interesting to the people who have never had the pleasure of hearing this particular show, the Mercury Theater's presentation of the War of the Worlds, taken from the original transcription records of that particular broadcast. Ladies and gentlemen, the director of the Mercury Theater and star of these broadcasts, Orson Welles. We know now that in the early years of the 20th century, this world was being watched closely by intelligences greater than man, and yet as mortal as his own. And now more of the Upton Bell Show coming to you live from the El Morocco on Wall Street in Worcester. You'd be surprised uh, of the varying degrees I got, but let's take a look at it and see. Then who did it? Well, you, you want to know my honest opinion? Must this? be Mark Furman. No. That's it. No, Mark I... Furman did it. Go I knew it all along. Mouth, Robin, John, call Mark immediately. Let's put him in the dock. Upton, don't Mark word... Furman. Mark, who did it? Mouth. You tell me. You tell me if O.J. had that fraudulent 1-800 or 900 number. I'm thrilled to be here. The happiest I've ever been, and I just want to say thanks to the people who came down and took part in that. My funniest recollection of Worcester is that uh, when I first was there and was staying at the Coronado Hotel, I got the worst job. The, the newest announcer always got the worst job, which was to open the station early in the morning. If I'm not mistaken, we opened at 6 or maybe 5.45. And uh, that announcer had to come to work early and open up the place and uh, do the early morning news and the early morning market reports for the farmers. And the other announcers wouldn't come to work for another half hour or even an hour. He would play records and do... Uh, the weather and so forth for the for the farmers who rose so early. I presume the case is still the same. Well, one morning, I, I was I'd been there less than a week, I suppose, just four or five days. I woke up and I saw it was seven thirty. I was already an hour and a half late for work, and I. I I just threw my clothes on in a panic, and I didn't wait for the elevator. I ran down the steps, jumping whole flights at a time, seven or eight, nine steps at a time, and just raced through the lobby and down the street, running as still dark, running as fast as I could. I passed a movie theater about a half block down. My, I, my clothes were just half on me. My shoes weren't tight, anything. I was just in a panic here. My just be, I was the new boy just beginning the job and already committing this 
unforgivable sin an hour and a half late. What was the station doing? Had anybody got there to open it? I passed a movie theater, and people were coming out. Uh, a mob of people leaving the theater. And, and it just, my, my mind began to mesh into gear, and I realized it wasn't 7.30 in the morning, it was 7.30 in the evening. I had finished uh, work around 4, whatever it was in the afternoon, gone back to the hotel for a nap. And awakened, looked at the clock, and just gone into sheer panic. I guess, I guess I've never been as frightened in my life. From the radio theater of WTAG at Worcester, Massachusetts, this program was heard in Canada through the facilities of the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. This is station WTAG.